Okay, Jason, you, I just want to make sure we can hear you okay. Yep, I'm here, Mark. Okay, cool. So welcome, everybody, to tonight's Offer Vault webinar. This is Mark Roth. And this is the um, first webinar we've done in a while. I used to do the webinars quite often here on Offer Vault, uh, and we, we don't do them as often anymore. So, um, you know, I keep on the lookout for, you know, great presenters and, and great topics, and Jason is definitely one of them. Definitely one of the smartest guys I know in the business. Jason uh, is the owner and founder of Ads for Dough, if you're not familiar with Jason. And um, he does a lot of business in, in CPA marketing and affiliate marketing. And he really knows his stuff when it comes to media buying and um, how to make these offers work. And also, um, he's created some pretty interesting tools, one of which he's going to share with you tonight. Um, that is a great uh, teaching tool. So I, I'm really excited to, you know, have him uh, present it to you tonight. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to turn over to, to Jason. Just one one quick comment. Uh, we are recording the, the webinar tonight. So if you miss something or if you can't make the whole thing, you'll be able to uh, access it. Uh, it'll be up in the next uh, probably day or so on Offer Vault in the webinar section. So that's that'll be available for you. Um, and also, if you have any questions during the webinar, you could type them into into the chat box, and you know we'll keep an eye on that. Probably Jason will answer questions more towards the end, but you know feel free to uh, type in questions there, and we'll keep an eye on it. So without uh, any further ado, Jason, why don't you uh, take it away from here? Hey Mark, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I really appreciate you guys putting on this uh, offer vault. It looks like we got about 130, 140 people attending, so that's really exciting. Uh, this is my my first time I've ever done a webinar. Uh, I was telling Mark a little earlier today that this uh, this PowerPoint was a couple of pictures and some text thrown on a on a PowerPoint white slide, and I handed it over to Megan, my de designer here, and. She made this thing look beautiful, and just really happy for you know how it, how that part has turned out. But I'm I'm excited to uh, share with you some ideas. I uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself later, but more importantly for for you guys listening, I really think Facebook uh, as a channel for ads. I mean a lot of a lot of you have been buying on Facebook for years. I assume that are listening. I really put this together more for beginner type affiliates. Maybe if you you've been doing this a long time, you're going to have some ideas as well. But um, you know that you might pull away from it that gets you back to basics. Because I'm a huge fan of the basics, and I and that's going to be some of what this uh, this webinar is about. So on this page, you're going to see that uh, we've done about a quarter billion dollars in affiliate sales uh, on a hundred different verticals. That 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 number is probably more than that. I would say we've done close to a quarter billion just on Facebook ads alone, and that's not just us buying here internally or me just as an affiliate, but uh, rather a for d all of our partners that we work with, all of our uh, great clients that we work with. We, we all do a ton of Facebook ads and have a lot of success with that, and really the reason I wanted to, to talk about this topic is lately I've been getting really deep into uh, Shopify stuff and reading a lot of those forums. And it seems like those the people from that world are having a lot of the same struggles that the guys that start in the CPA world, and they come onto Facebook, they run some ads, and they lose some money. So, uh, as as Mark said, um, this is Startup Alley. I'll talk about that a little later. Our affiliate network, our CPA network, is called A4D. We're based out of San Diego. Have 40 people or so here, and have been been in business since 08. Um, I'm going to talk about some numbers in this. Uh, I, I always like to put an earning disclaimer up front. Uh, I, it's fairly public knowledge that uh, we've been sued by the Federal Trade Commission at one point, um, <clears throat> not for what we were doing, but rather uh, what affiliates were doing through us and what merchants were doing on the other side. We at A4D were a pass-through and inherently got pulled in the whole situation, even though uh, none of the creative stuff was us. So my attorney always wants me to be very forthcoming with disclosures. So the first thing at the top, uh, affiliate market CPA marketing is not a get-rich-quick scheme. They're, you're not going to come in here 
and put in $100 and tomorrow make a million. That's not what this is about. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, since about 2003. It's been a career for me, and I love it and am very passionate about it, and I'll talk about more of that as, as time goes on here. You're not going to make a quarter billion dollars. You know, you might, but chances are you're not going to. Um, but, you know, as we get down here, uh, I when I started in this business, uh, I bought a biz op, and I just wanted to make $100 a day was my goal because at the time I was making – uh, roughly $36,000 a year, and I thought, man, if I could just replace my income at $100 a day, that would be a life-changing experience for me. That would mean I wouldn't need to go into work. That would mean that I wouldn't have to have a boss, and I could really start off uh, on my on my own path. And you know, it took me about 12 months of 14 to 17 hours a day of uh, very hard work to hit that $100 a day goal. And, you know, where, where that led me to is once you hit that $100 a day goal, then you want to hit the $200, then the $500, then the $1,000 a day goal. And then you start to think about, okay, what would I need to do in order to make a million dollars a year? And that's when you work backwards. You take a million dollars. And we, luckily, we're in a 365-day-a-year uh, business where we get make money every day. And that's two thousand seven hundred and thirty-nine day uh, dollars a day that you need to make in order to make a million dollars a year. Now, I know that may sound like a big number, but it's very, very doable with this business. I know people that make ten million, twenty million dollars a year in profit, not just revenue, uh, doing CPA marketing, affiliate marketing, and and so forth. So, hey, we got that out of the way. Um, next, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a group of you out there right now that are probably, you know, have heard about people making money with Facebook ads, whether it be on forums. I'm a huge guy in, in forums, in, any forums where there's a community of people uh, talking about the business. This is one of the ways that I found was the, the best way for me to learn. I'm a huge fan of Stack That Money. I'm a huge fan of uh, what's called App Playbook now. Offer Vault has a forum. Uh, we are building out a product forum called Product Squad, but just any kind of community where you can uh, learn and hear what other people are doing and their successes and follow along guides are always useful, useful tools. Um, and on here, it says, you know, Facebook ads making millions, but every time I try, I lose money. So, you know, I imagine there's a, a good group of you out there that probably fall into this bucket. Um, you know, and some of you may be affiliate marketers working in the CPA world, in the CPS world. Some of you may be offer owners or uh, involved in e-commerce. That's uh, being uh, Shopify. I've been really getting into Shopify lately, and it's uh, pretty interesting some of the stuff people are doing. There's some great Shopify forums out there, or I should say groups on Facebook that I'm a part of and, and are very valuable as well. Um, and then down here at the bottom, I put, if you're an expert at media buying, if you're an expert at Facebook, this webinar is probably not for you. You probably know all this stuff already. This is more position for people that are, that are newer to this business and looking to, to move past their, uh, those first initial steps in order to uh, get their first wins. The three successful uh, campaign Facebook stuff, uh, secrets for, for Facebook, um, number one secret is, you know, don't get yourself stuck in a niche. I find a lot of people out there, a lot of other uh, educators that basically say, okay, well, what you need to do is you need to limit your market really small. You may need to make your ads super targeted. And this is great. And, yes, you may get a, a decent ROI with this, but it really limits the scale of your business. And I I hear a lot of you all the time because I, I probably have 10 to 20 people add me on Skype a week. Uh, I'm involved with all these forums. I hear everybody say, okay, well, I got this profitable. I'm spending uh, $20 a day. I'm making $50 a day, but I don't know how to scale the campaign. So, you know, the first thing that you want to do is any time that I think about uh, building out a new campaign, I, I call it my fire hose strategy. And it's like, where can I find the most amount of traffic? the most amount of advertising placements where I can create something to put in front of it in order to make that thing successful. Every time I wind up going down a road of niche targeting or long tail keywords or 
anything of this sort, uh, you know, it really limits the scope and it limits the potential uh, for the campaign. So if I'm going to invest the time, I want to focus on figuring out where can I find a huge audience, 30 million, 50 million people that I can run my ad to. The, the other nice part about that is if you run your ad to a huge audience, it doesn't burn out as fast. The same ad, you show it to 20,000 people and it serves you, you know, whatever, 20,000 impressions a day by day 10. All those people have already seen your ad 10 times. It's going to start to lose its uh, effectiveness uh, in engaging people. And so you, you really want to pick a big audience. Uh, I'm not really going to talk much more about that. I don't have a lot of slides on it, but I think it's really important to preface where this conversation is starting is don't niche yourself into a corner. Try and find a broad demographic like 45 plus males or 30 to 40 male, 30 year old to 40 year old males or 30 to 50 year old women or whatever the large demographic is where you can get a lot of ad impressions and then eventually if you get Facebook all figured out on this broad demographic then you can take that and transition that same methodology to other traffic sources. Um, a lot of the targeting options that you'll find on Facebook uh, also on Google may not transition to native ad networks like Taboola or Outbrain or any of these other channels. So I try and always as I think about setting up a campaign, thinking about, okay, I'm going to figure it out on this source first and then transition that uh, to other sources once it's successful. Secret number two, <coughs> and this is really primarily what this, uh, what this webinar is going to be about. It's a simple Facebook ads success formula, and really it's going to get to basics of how do you make Facebook ads successful what is required to do it, and how do you make you know, your click cost, what you're paying per click, low enough that as you send it to something, the EPC or the earnings per click end up being higher than that initial click cost. Um, a lot of that's going to be complicated. I'm going to go quick through it. I don't expect you to understand it in this webinar. Uh, if it's not something you're already familiar with, there's going to be a lot of acronyms talked about. There's, there's going to be some basic math involved, and just just know, don't try and understand everything that I'm saying. We're going to put this online. You can watch it again, and then also this leads us to secret number three. Um, basically, I've been training. I probably trained 500 plus uh, affiliate marketers in the CPA world how to be profitable in um, either trained or coached or mentored or whatever uh, in the CPA world, how to be profitable and how to be successful. I've taken all of this stuff and I've turned it into a really cool learning methodology that uh, I think you'll be really excited to share and you know that we'll get to uh, as we move on towards the towards the end of the presentation. So as I said, what you know, uh, I told you a little bit about myself, um, just really briefly because it's not really important. Who am I? Why should I listen to Jason? I, I've been in this business for 12 to 13 years now. I started, I, I bought a, a business opportunity. Uh, you'll see a biz op, which is like how to make money on the internet. That got me involved with a forum. I, I built a network of friends. We started doing some stuff. We put a lot of work in. Um, I made $26,000 in my first year. Of that money, I think I was getting 900 a month in uh, 900 a month in unemployment, so you, you can do them, or 900 every two weeks in unemployment, so two grand a month, so 24,000 a year of that was unemployment. So that made I mean I made two grand in my first year of working on this business. It's uh, the other day I found my actual tax return and was showing it to the employees here at A4D, and they were all they were all pretty surprised. That was kind of fun. Um, but I started by buying a biz up, getting involved with the community, building a network of people. And then that biz op originally was for something called Black Hat SEO, which is basically reverse engineering and figuring out how the search engines work and ranking stuff, then moving to White Hat, uh, White Hat SEO. I was a full-time affiliate for four years. I was uh, the guy that worked out of my house in my pajamas, woke up at 7, took my laptop on my lap, typed in, you know, started checking stats. That led me to noontime. That led me to my wife coming home at 5 o'clock dropping dinner on my desk and me working until 2 in the morning when I passed out and went to bed again and woke up at 7 a.m. super excited, 
to uh, start it all over again. I, I'm really passionate and love this business. Uh, what, one thing uh, I tell people often is, is you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be super intelligent to be successful in this business. You just have to be diligent. Uh, I've seen people come in and yeah, I mean they run one campaign and they make a ton of money. And then I've also seen people come in and it takes him four months, six months in order to make any decent substantial amount of money. In my case, it, it took me a year. And, you know, the last thing I have on that list there is I'm old. I'm, I'm 41, which makes me basically a dinosaur in the internet and online marketing world. Uh, so I have a lot of wisdom and, you know, I push through and try and learn stuff. And that's what some of the stuff that I'm hoping to share with you here today. A for D, just briefly, we were founded in 08. Once I was an affiliate, I decided to move on and start a CPA network. I had a bunch of partners that I was working with. I aggregated them into the CPA network. At the time, I was a moderator on a forum called Wicked Fire, which was the largest affiliate marketing forum uh, on the internet at the time. People got wind of that, and uh, very shortly, I had about 2,000 signups in the a for d system. And you can see some numbers here as far as what we've done. That's not really important. Just trying to get you to understand it. I, I know a couple things at least. So let's get started with the actual um, the actual process of, of how do we make a successful Facebook ads campaign. Um, there's no magic trick. I know a lot of uh, guru people out there want to tell you that, you know, here's this trick, do this thing. The, the problem with those tricks is even if there is a trick that's going to make you some money for a short amount of time, that they're going to go away and you're going to be left with right where you started. Uh, if you look at my starting out career as an affiliate marketer, it was make some money, make nothing, make some money, make nothing, make some money, make nothing. And, and really, you know, for anybody that wants stability, security, or anything like that, um, you know, if you're just looking for the next handout or looking for the next trick, uh, it's, it's probably not going to make you a, a very successful marketer long term. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today is really, really the basics. And as I said, you know, in pro you know, I, I probably mentored and trained 500 people. I've probably talked to 10,000 people plus in this space between Affiliate Summit West and all the trade shows and all the people that hit me up on Skype. And I have some real key takeaways on you know what makes the people successful uh, in this world and what makes people fail in this world. And most people that come into this space, if you're a new marketer and you're new to the space, um, here, here's some things that I bet you might be doing as of right now. Uh, you try lots of things based on your hunches. I feel like this is going to do well. I, I think this is going to do well. Um, you know, it might do well. but you really don't have any any evidence. You don't have any um, logical standing to decide why this may or may not work. And what I'm hoping to get you today is is some basis for that. Another thing that I see people do very often is they jump from vertical to vertical. I'm going to try dating, then I'm going to move to refinance, and then somebody said they were doing well with tech support, and then somebody said they were doing well with diet, and I tried this, and I tried that, and I tried the other thing. And none of them worked. None of them worked. And if, to make matters even worse, you're probably hearing a bunch of stuff on forums and through other people of how they're doing really well on this traffic source or that traffic source. And we always have a case of shiny bobble syndrome as any entrepreneur. And what I mean by that is we, we chase those shiny bobbles in our lives, right? Like it's like, ooh, the grass is greener on that side. Let me go. Let me go run this traffic source in this vertical. And, you know, this typically leads you to not really learning much. You're just throwing a lot of stuff out there. And really, at the end of the day, your skills aren't necessarily getting any better. It's really what the experts do um, and what I would invite anybody at any stage of their process of learning to do is... Uh, follow, you know, what I've seen the experts do and always what we're trying to focus on here at A4D. This gets much, much more difficult as time goes on, as an organization gets bigger, but 
We're constantly refocusing people. We're constantly making them focus on one thing, one deliverable, with timelines, with budgets, with all of this stuff. So they, uh, experts, media buyers are, you know, they calculate their chances of success before they start. So basically sit down with a very basic uh, marketing math worksheet or Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can find some of this on my blog, which there'll be a link to at the end. And plug in the numbers and see if there's any statistical chance of success this campaign actually working. I've had affiliates come in and they're like, well, I need to pay 50 cents a click. This offer pays $3 and therefore, you know, I, I'm going to give it a try. And inherently, what, you've got to convert it, you know, 20 15, 20% in order to make that offer work and, and even break even. So the chances of that actually being successful are, are not highly leveraged in your favor. So we always want to uh, calculate out our chances of success and we're going to talk about what those metrics and numbers uh, are involved with that as we move forward here. Uh, the, next the next is focus on one vertical. So this is I'm going to focus on auto insurance. I'm going to focus on refinance. Somebody's making the refinance vertical work. So I'm going to figure out how to make this vertical work and I am not going to do anything until I figure this out. And what this is going to allow you to do um, in, in uh, also in accordance with one traffic source is push through any barriers. I always like to talk about um, if, you're, if you have kids and your kids weren't going to eat and the one thing that you had to do in order to feed your starving children was make this one offer work on this one traffic source, that's the place you want to operate out of. This is the only chance of success you have and how are you going to push through? Because what inevitably happens as we go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of uh, experiences and learning uh, for these very focused specific things, you, find, you find, um, things that you never would have noticed if you only dealt with them on a surface level. That's, hey, I submitted some ads to Google for payday loans. I bid on payday keywords and that didn't work. And now I went to Facebook and my friend said that auto insurance was doing well, so I ran some auto insurance ads. I spent $100 and that didn't work. So we always want to have a focused plan on what we're going to do, set ourselves up for success, and then focus on one vertical and one traffic source. That's kind of up to you. I mean, if you uh, wonder what vertical and what traffic source, good, good ways to find those things out. Uh, if you work with a CPA network, um, go talk to your affiliate manager. They, have, they should have all that data for you. You know, what verticals are working for other affiliates, what kind of EPCs, which we'll talk about in a second, they're getting. So inevitably, then you could do your calculations on what you would need to pay per click in order to be profitable and successful with that. It all comes down to simple math. Uh, as, uh, as I said, every, every marketer knows their math. They know how to um, build projections based on what they think might happen. Do these, are these always right? Are you wrong a lot of times? Absolutely. But at least if you have a roadmap that you're working off of before you start a campaign, you don't just okay, well, I'm going to put this thing up, I'm going to spend $100, and then I'm going to see if it's going to work. Um, it, you know, you want to factor in uh, a lot of the other metrics that are involved and see if those metrics are coming into alignment or not. And if they're not, then try and focus on how do I get those metrics to come into alignment uh, in order to do well. So as I said, media buying is, is very simple math. It's really only one equation. Um, and keep in mind, like I said, you, you don't need to understand this math in order to be successful at this business right, right at this time. There, there's a real simple way that I'm going to talk about in order to learn this and really build muscle memory like, like you're going to go to the gym and you're going to work out and you're going to do bench press. And I talk about this story sometimes, um, building muscle memory. So you go to the gym the first time and maybe you do a 90 pound bench press and then the second time you do a 95 pound bench press and then you get about two weeks down the road and you've been bench pressing uh, fairly regularly and you start to build some muscle mechanics, some muscle memory and the body starts to understand this is just how this works 
and this is part of this, this learning process, and all of a sudden you're benching 135 pounds and 145 pounds. Did you all of a sudden get 50% stronger, 80% stronger? No, you just became your muscle memory and you actually learned the mechanics and the basics of how to do this. And a lot of that happens through repetition. So all I'm saying with this is, you know, don't don't look at this and go, oh man, math, I'm not good at math. Because we've we've got a way that we think we can get you to have some muscle memory to be able to understand this stuff without even, even able to think about it. In our learning process, we have uh, four stages of learning. We don't know what we don't know. Swahili is a language, or that, that, that you don't, I should say, uh, what you don't know, you don't know. There's probably a language that you don't know out there that all of a sudden would come into your awareness, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wager that that was affiliate marketing or CPA marketing at some point. A lot of your friends don't even know it exists unless you've told them. Then all of a sudden you're going to become aware of this thing and you're not going to know how to do it, but you're going to at least it's going to exist for you. Then you're going to become consciously competent where you work on this thing over and over again consciously and it seems like a struggle and it seems difficult. And then at some point you're going to move that skill set to what's called unconsciously competent and that is where you just do something. So as we talk about this equation, that is where all of the top affiliate marketers are. They look at something and they go, okay, well, you know, what can I affect in this equation and what can I not? And let's talk about some of these things. Uh, CPM, uh, for those of you that are not familiar, so every thousand ad impressions that show on a website is called a CPM. There's typically a dollar amount related to a CPM, like one dollar per thousand impressions or one dollar per thousand ad views. The next thing is the click-through rate, and that is what percentage of people actually click through on those ads that you're showing on the page. And if you multiply these things together, you're going to wind up with the CPC. I think there's you have to times it by 100 or something in there, and I didn't put that in there, um, but I should have. Uh, th again, this is I, the actual full thing is on my website. But that's going to give you the CPC or uh, what we call the cost per click. So what you have to pay for every single click that you drive to your website. Now, on the other side of this equation, we have the conversion rate. And this is you convert it 1% or 5% or 10%. So essentially, every 100 visitors come to your site, 10 people turn into customers, users, leads, installs, or, or what, what have you. And that's going to be your conversion rate. And then also what, what you're earning. So if you own your own product, what is your lifetime value of your customer? If you're in the affiliate world, what is the CPA that they're paying you? If you're in the CPS world, what is the, dollar, what is the average dollar amount of the rev share that they're providing you? And then if you multiply the conversion rate times the CPA, that's going to give you the earnings per click. So every single visitor that comes to your website is going to be worth how much? based on that equation above, essentially the conversion rate and what the, what the value of that person is. And then where it gets really simple here is if we're paying less per click, then we're earning per click, then we're profitable, and that's a profitable campaign. I hope that makes sense to everybody, and we're going to talk about it uh, a little bit more in depth. So when it, when it comes to Facebook ads, there's things that you can control, and there is things that you cannot control, really. And I'm going to speak in this specific instance from a, an affiliate marketer or a CPA marketer. Um, so your, the CPM that Facebook is selling ads for, you cannot control. That is uh, adjusted based on whatever the marketplace and the bid prices are for that inventory to be sold. Um, the next thing you can't control that much, you can control it with, uh, you know, the copy and the content in the body of your ads uh, somewhat. You, ca you can control it a little bit about um, the intent level of the user that clicks on your ads, and I'm not going to get into that this much, but uh, more than anything, that's really controlled by the merchant or, or the person that you send the traffic to. You know, how well does their landing pages convert? How much conversion optimization do they do? And, and so forth. 
The other thing you can't really control is the CPA. You, yes, you can negotiate it up or down a little bit. If you do own your own product, you can figure out other ways to monetize users to increase the overall lifetime value of those users. Uh, if you get somebody, they buy your ebook for 20 bucks, and then you sell them another product for 50 bucks, and you sell them another product for 100 bucks. Now they're worth 170 versus, or you know, but only a certain percentage are going to take those extra products. So on average, your your average user uh, comes up. So that's essentially equates to your CPA. But I buy CPC, and I, you know, we talked a little bit before. Uh, about CPM and Facebook and CPM and I know some of you are thinking right now is I, I don't actually buy CPM and I know that's an option within Facebook but whether you know this or not uh, I'd like to share with you Facebook actually sells all of their inventory on CPM or cost per thousand impressions um, what they'll do is they will uh, you know give you a small test on CPC to see what your CTR is and then they can gauge how much they're going to earn on a CPM basis by running your ad. But everything they do is on a CPM and that's a little bit of what I'm going to show you as we progress here. So uh, let's see. So what I wanted what I wanted to get to there is um, the only thing you can really affect in the platform uh, substantially is going to be your ad CTR. This is this is the click-through rates or this is the percentage of people that actually click through your ads, right? Like th this is the biggest thing and how, why does this make um, why does this make such a big impact? Uh, we, we need to uh, we basically need to create these high CTRs because the more people that click through your ads, if you're buying on a CPC or a cost per click, that's the more money that Facebook, uh, or I should say the, the less they're going to have to charge you per click in order to drive uh, that CTR. I think this slide's kind of out of order. I, I apologize for that. Hold on one second here. Well, let me let me go back a little bit. So as I was saying, Facebook Facebook sells all their inventory on a CPM. So if they sell their CPM on a $1 CPM and your CTR is a 0.1 CTR, and this is kind of like cheater math that I like to use, that means you're getting one click per every 1,000 impressions or one every $1 in CPM. Therefore, that means you're going to pay a dollar a click. Now, if you get a 0.2 CTR, you're roughly going to pay 50 cents a click. If you get a 0.4 CTR, that means you're going to get four clicks for every thousand impressions. That means you're going to pay 25 cents a click. And this continues down as until you get to in US some stuff, and I'm going to illustrate some numbers a little later on. This gets down into the I've seen stuff at 12 cents. I've seen stuff at 16 cents. I've heard many stories but never got them myself on US traffic that you can get for one cent but it's all an impact a direct impact of how high this CTR is on your ad so if you have a 3% CTR not a 0.3 but a 3% that means you're getting 30 clicks so you take a $1 CPM for example and you divide that by 30 clicks and that's roughly what you should be playing paying uh, per click so how do we get good CTRs on our ads? Um, we need to reach out and grab people with the ad. The, the most impactful component of the ad is going to be the image. So you, you can change the, uh, what I like to do a lot with my testing is run the same headline and the same body copy and then um, go out and get, you know, keep testing with images because image is going to drive about 80% of your CTR. And uh, Megan put some images up here that you might have seen before. Uh, these are some some good high CTR images uh, that have had some good impact in the past. As as Mark said, we're going to be putting the recording up so you guys can you know have access to these and know these. These pretty common in the marketplace. I, I really like to go out and look at what images are running and then understand an abs uh, abstract uh, strategy out of you know why might that 
image be working a lot a lot of these are just very much curiosity driven like what is that thing what is that thing why does he have snow in his hands what are they talking about with this arrow pointing at this right so lots of different stuff there so so to illustrate this point um, we pulled a couple of our internal campaigns that we we uh, have ran in the past this is an active stuff that we're running right now we're not giving away our our current active campaigns that are successful for us. However, this is stuff that on older campaigns that we've run before. Uh, and as you can see here, you know, look at these vast variances in CTR. Uh, a lot of times I'll have affiliates or merchants or whoever come to me and they say, Jason, you know, take a look at my ads. Tell me which of these ads you think are going to be successful. And, <laughs> and you know, I have no idea. You got to put the ads up and you got to have to get the data and you got to let enough clicks run through it until you have some sort of statistical significance or some sort of statistical relevance in order to determine which ads are the best. And then you just make more ads and more ads that are more iterations of that. But the biggest point to illustrate here is on this, this uh, uh, Facebook news feed ad, on this ad, we had a CTR of 1.87%, and that drove us a, a click cost of 64 cents uh, per click. So th this is pretty high. I, I would typically never run a campaign that had a click cost this high, but a lot of times in your testing, you're going to find stuff that does and does not work. Um, this is an ad for the same product, and uh, with a 3.55% CTR. Now, you can look at these ads and you can go, well, this one is better because this or this one is better because of that. But realistically, they're in my mind, they're both fundamentally good ads. But you know, that's why that's why you got to do the testing. But what's really important is you can see over here, you know, how much of an impact this CTR has on this CPC price. It's a lot easier to make something profitable um, if you can get drive this CPC price down and I have a slide a little later on that talks about how low that we see uh, CPC prices based on uh, the different placements on Facebook and uh, what those CTR, relative CTRs are. Here's another one. Um, this one here, we were at 4.6%. Uh, and you can see here, this is the exact same copy. This is the exact same headline the exact same call to action, the only thing that varied between these two ads was the image. That's the only thing. So this ad here had a 4.6% CTR. This ad here had a 9% CTR, double what this one did. The click cost here, 20 cents. The click cost here dropped down to 9 cents. Much easier to make something profitable at 9 cents than it is at 20 cents, isn't it? Another example here, just you can see double double the CTR again, half the click cost. So I, I put this up. I think this is a real useful tool. Um, if you have me on Facebook, maybe you saw I, I posted this image up there. I made this short time ago. I had my media buy team here internally at A4D compile these numbers. Uh, we update this. Uh, we have like a spreadsheet that basically tells us you know what our CPC costs are, so we can do uh, effective projections on whether we should be running a campaign or not, whether we should test it. Um, and you can see here at a 6% CTR on desktop newsfeed, uh, that's going to drive those click costs down to 15 cents to 25 cents. Um, <clears throat> on, you know, you're up in the 1%, 0 to 1% range. You could be paying as much as $2 per click. It sure is hard to make something profitable paying $2 per click. And if you're making it profitable at $2 a click, Imagine how much money you would be making if you could get it down to 25 cents or shoot even 80 percent, 80 cents because now all that becomes profit. Rather than paying it out to media, that all becomes profit. So you can see down here that the average prices on mobile are, are typically going to come in lower and then we have the this kind of cut off on the side it looks like but we have the, the right hand side Inherently, because this is in the feed and this is where people are scrolling and this is where people are looking, you can see here your ad CTRs need to be much, much higher because the average ad CTRs for this placement are much higher. And remember, Facebook sells on a CPM. 
Um, so on right hand side, here's some of the metrics that you're looking at, and here's some of the click costs that that's going to drive for that. Um, and what I'll do, uh, you know, I'll put this up on my blog as well. Um, that I'll that I'll share a link for at the end that you guys can go over there and grab. Uh, so you know that's a lot of math, that's a lot of numbers, that's a lot of terminology. I mean, I, I understand that. I remember when I first started in this business, and you know everybody was talking about you know a million different things, and I was reading forums, and forums were filling me with more and more information, and I didn't know what buckets that that information went in. I didn't know where to organize it in my head. I didn't know what impacted what. And, you know, it, it really was a lot of complexity for me. And like I said, I, I'm not an overly intelligent person. I, I'm extraordinarily diligent. I will focus, I will be focused and determined to be successful at something. And, and when I got into this business, um, you know, I remember the first thing that I, I made actual money with was AdSense, Google AdSense. And Google sent me a check for a uh, dollar and thirty-six cents, and I got it, and I held it in my hand, and it said Google Inc. on it, and I took it to the bank, and I thought it was going to bounce, and then I checked my account for like three more days after that, and once that time passed and it didn't bounce, I decided that this was this was the business that I actually wanted to be in for the rest of my life. I love marketing. I love you know, engaging users in the in the challenge of, and that just leads to building products and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, internet, online, it's all it's all so much fun and and so amazing and can take you to such great great heights. But as as you looked at that stuff above, and and I've had this conversation a lot of times with a lot of people, uh, your eyes might have glazed over. Um, but what I want you to understand is is that stuff. Is what is the difference between what makes you successful and and what makes you not successful in this business? There's a lot of people out there that are, that are pitching, uh, you know, various strategies that basically all are just plays on that, right? The way to get good CTR ads. So here's like the things that you do, but they don't teach you the basics to understanding how you're going to weather the storm long term and be be great at this business. So I think it's imperative that you really learn the basics of copywriting, the basics of marketing math, you know, how to pick a good image, how to write a good headline that engages, how to do all this stuff because this is the most important and key part of the business. So, you know, you could go out there and and you know, gather the information up and and, and learning happens in a lot of different ways. Um, but as it says down here, uh, if you're saying these things are uh, overwhelming, you're definitely not alone in this, and I've heard this from many people. So after, after many years of educating and training people, I, I've seen a lot of uh, consistent, replayable patterns. And um, at, you know, some of this stuff I've iterated before, but the learning process is essentially, yes, you can go out there and you can buy a bunch of information, you can read all that information, but then you've actually got to go implement it and try it, and then you've got to fail, make errors, mistake, correct those errors, try again. All this stuff costs a lot of time and, and a lot of money to do. You also want to build up this muscle memory because when you, when you run your 10th campaign versus your first campaign, it's going to go 10 times as fast. When you run your 100th campaign versus your 10th campaign, it, you're going to probably increase your chances of success of that campaign from 2 to 5% up to 30 or 40% because you've got this built-in muscle memory. Um, and you want to uh, you know, do these things over and over again in order to really learn how to do them well. So my, my thought, you know, this, was, this project started about four years ago. Um, I started to think about how could we teach people this stuff in a really fun, engaging way that um, you know wouldn't give them the fear of failure, would let them uh, learn in a in a fun environment, and really build this muscle memory, build this repetition, learn all the basics, and really come out with, through an experience of not actually. Uh, you know, doing learning because I am I am terrible at school. Uh, I went, I always say I got a four-year degree. I went to 
to junior college and it took me four years to graduate. I then went on to uh, I went on to a four year university and a transfer and I and I failed out in one semester. I just don't li learn in the traditional ways that well, and that's what really got me interested in gamification. I I was a big video gamer and just uh, just so you understand what gamification is, uh, it's a it's a way to learn things with uh, video game type uh, stuff related to them. So levels and um, badges and earning and going through this this creative process and I, I'm a big gamer and I um, over many years I've, I've probably invested tens of thousands of hours into uh, you know playing video games and I was thinking you know I, I've got a skill you know I learned how to play Diablo 3 really really well but it's totally not useful for regular life and that's what led me to think okay well this is pretty cool uh, you know, there's this concept called gamification, and what if we could teach people uh, media buying, where they, you know, we gave them bite-sized chunks of information, we then let them practice, we then coach them through the game, and we gave them a full, fun virtual experience with a, a, a video game environment where they felt like they were playing a game rather than learning through traditional book uh, learning method. Which, which obviously, I, you know, like I said, I've, I've never done that well with. Um, so that led us to create uh, a game called Startup Alley. And Startup Alley is an HTML5 game. It basically works in any browser. Um, and in Startup Alley, you are uh, this character on the right, which name is Shane. Shane essentially gets out of college, doesn't understand um, how he's going to uh, make his way in the world. He gets hired at a, at a car dealership working for this guy named Russo and he starts to buy Facebook ads for uh, to bring in customers for the car dealership. So you basically, in the beginning, you learn uh, how to be an employee, then later he moves on to uh, doing freelance work, uh, media buying for people and, and buying ad, Facebook ads for people uh, as a freelancer and then from there he moves on to building his own startup, which is why it's called Startup Alley. He essentially starts in an alley wondering what he's going to do and then later go on to, to build his own startup. Um, in this game, you know, some of, the, some of the basics of what you're going to learn is that marketing math we talked about, the secrets of getting high CTRs and low CPCs, um, Facebook ad copywriting and image selection tricks, access to a community of experts, including myself, uh, I, I, you know, respond to any questions. You know, my my whole goal with this product is you to go in, learn the basics of media buying, and then progress on to doing some of your own Facebook ad buying. And then now you're going to be part of this community or part of this forum. And if you have questions or get stuck, you've got the whole power of A for D here that helps uh, curate the forum and answer questions. You've got myself. You've got a lot of other people that I admire and respect in the industry responding to answers and questions uh, or questions and answers inside of the forum. So that, that's kind of the goal. And then uh, very shortly we're going to be releasing uh, a Facebook ad account manager that basically takes all the complexity out of Facebook buying and makes it as simple as possible. It's getting all more and more features and getting more and more uh, difficult and uh, challenging to understand because there's so much complexity. So our goal is to have you come into the game, learn the basics, then go and use our platform to buy Facebook ads uh, with simplicity and then be able to interact with the community and talk about some of the challenges that you're seeing and get uh, really powerful feedback on you know, stuff that might you know, make you successful. Um, and then down here, all of that, we do, we do a monthly recurring subscription. You can do uh, 27 a month uh, or $207 a year. Here's a, a couple of screenshots from that. And, you know, just for tuning in and listening to me talk a little bit today, I wanted to make you guys a special offer. This is going to be uh, live until midnight Pacific Standard Time tomorrow night. Um, as I said, we're typically charging uh, 207 for buying out the full year. And what we're going to be offering to all uh, people watching this uh, webinar is going to be $97. So if you sign up in the next 24 hours or so, 
you're going to have uh, you're going to have an uh, option to get the full year for ninety seven dollars. As I said, I'll give you guys uh, links to that marketing math worksheet. Also, uh, I'd like to do a conference call with everybody that signs up from the Offer Vault uh, webinar here, so we'll be able to see those of you that use the coupon code. We will reach out to you via email, and then we'll put a, a brainstorming networking call together for that. As I said, uh, the coupon code is down here. It's just Offer Vault, straight, straightforward and simple. Uh, Play Startup Alley is going to be the domain. I wanted to put on here kind of how you do this. So you're going to go to Startup Alley. You can register with your email, or you can register with Facebook or Google. Any of those are going to work. This is actually the next step. We do. If for some reason you don't, you can't afford the the $99 option, and you you want to um, you want to do a seven-day trial. We do offer a $1 seven-day trial. But if you want to take advantage of this $99 dollar option that's only only going to be available for the next 24 hours just click this button here which is going to be the pro version and then go up top um, to um, this upper right where it says coupon code once you're in the pro version type offer vault into that box that says coupon code and put your credit card information and stuff there and then click purchase and you'll get the discounted price of ninety seven dollars I know it doesn't say that here when you put the coupon code in, it's not going to update, but you will only be charged $97. With that said, I want to, I really want to thank everybody for attending and uh, investing the time into, you know, learning a little bit more and furthering your adventure into this uh, wonderful world of, of online marketing. Um, I hope to see all of you at some point at an affiliate summit West or an ad tech or a leads con or uh, meetup or any other thing like that. Uh, if, uh, on here, I put just a, a few of our brands and a few of our websites for things that we've built. And uh, oh, the one thing I didn't put, shoot. Well, let's see. I'm going to type it in here. <laughs> uh, so my blog, let me, off.com. Oh, um, and then just click on the blog link there. My Twitter is going to be oh, my Twitter is SmackSorter, and you guys can follow me on there. I'm also on Stack That Money. I pretty much go by SmackSor anywhere. So always feel free to ask me questions or approach me. Also, uh, my uh, Skype is going to be live Jason A 33 and I try and be as available as possible and, and help anybody that's uh, you know trying trying to be successful in this business and and with that uh, I'll, I'll hand it back to you Mark okay thanks Jason that was awesome um, guys you know you're lucky to have uh, participated tonight and listen to what Jason had to say and this game approach is, is really a unique um, teaching tool. Um, and uh, it, I would definitely take him up on his, um, you know, on his discount that he's offering tonight. It's an awesome deal. Um, as far as I, I've been answering questions in the chat box, I think I, think I got most of them. Um, if you have any questions if, that you want to ask, you know, we, we can hang out for a few more minutes and answer any uh, questions that you have. Um, sure. I'm happy to answer any questions, Mark, if you want to throw me anything in there. I can't see it, so I don't I don't know what's there. Well, here's one that's uh, not really related to, to what you talked about too much tonight, but Sheldon's asking about the top three verticals in volume on, on A4D. I don't know if you want to answer that one right now. but Sure. Um, refinance has been a very, very strong vertical for us for roughly two years. Uh, solar has come up really strong in the last six months. The other big uh, space that we do a lot in is uh, video sales letter, uh, info product via uh, Beverly Hills MD, which is a skincare product which is compliant and can be run on a lot of sources. Um, we do a lot with Money Morning and Stansbury Press. These are all VSL-based offers, so video sales letters, like a 45-minute a pitch uh, that gets somebody to buy. We 
I think we did something like 20 or 30 million dollars to the Pimsleur approach, which was a, a language learning product that was another VSL based product. So those, those things have, have done very well for us and, and our affiliates on the network. Okay, great. Um, what else? Uh, somebody asking about dating on Facebook, if that's possible or still working. Uh, Facebook has basically blocked all dating. Uh, the only way that you can get dating on currently is if you go to the merchant, the merchant basically whitelists your Facebook account. They're not really do they were doing it a while back. They're not doing it much anymore. Uh, I am the guy the only guys I know that are still running some dating on there are going to be people cloaking, which uh, essentially, you know, uh, is not something I, I highly condone. I, I like long-term sustainable campaigns. I don't like the ups and downs. So um, as far as dating and Facebook, I, I would probably stay away from it. They've been just something, just something of note on Facebook. I, they were really, really, really bad for many years. Uh, I lost my Facebook accounts. I didn't get it back uh, about a year ago. I hit them up and I finally got it back. Their support has been great. We have reps now for years. They wouldn't even talk with us. They'd nothing mattered. Nothing mattered at all. They, they, you just did not exist to them. And they've really come around in these last, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, I guess it's about six months, eight months now. I mean, they, their reps hit me up. My accounts get suspended. I made, they immediately get them back for me. A lot of what I'm doing on the Facebook front is uh, they have a um, they have a chat box. So uh, this is a great example on something like dating. Um, if you have uh, business.facebook.com is their business account, and you can go to the top right and it says help. Click on that, and then that's going to take you to a page. And in that page, I know if you're in the U.S., I'm not sure if you're in other countries. And, but in only certain times of the day in the U.S., there's a chat that you can do. And what I like to do is I like to say, hey, I'm thinking about running this offer on your platform. Can you give me some feedback on whether this would or would not be okay? And that's gone really, really well for us. Then if for some reason you run into an issue and they suspend the account, you can bring up that chat and say, hey, these guys signed off on this thing. So, you know, what's going on? And, 99 times out of 100, they'll give you the account back. Wow, right, that's great advice. Uh, yeah, that's always a big issue uh, as far as uh, Facebook accounts. And uh, But uh, like you say, in the past uh, six months or so, if it's uh, lightening up, that's great news. Um, a question on A4D, will you approve beginners? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, our our main thing uh, about approving people on a for d I, I don't care if it's your first day, you're just starting, none of that matters to me. What, what, what does matter to me is that you're serious, you're dedicated, you are willing to work through a plan with your affiliate manager of what you want to do, how you want to do it, what your goals are, where you want to get to. If you're willing to do those things as a beginner, then we're willing to invest into you. Keep in mind, all of our uh, accounts are very high touch. We're not an affiliate network where we just put, uh, you know, thousands of people into it and nobody interacts with them. Every single affiliate in our network has a direct contact that they can talk to. That will coach them. That will help them. That will uh, get through. Help them get through problems. So, it, you know, that all co that costs us money here at A4D. So, if you aren't serious and you're just kicking the tires, you know, and our affiliate managers are investing time into helping you and you're not serious about it, those people we're not looking for. I would suggest that you go to, to some other network and, and do that. But if you're serious about this business and you want to be successful, you know, we would love to have you sign up. Okay. Um, a bunch of people asking about the replay of the webinar. We are recording it and it'll be posted up on Offer Vault uh, by Thursday. So if you want to go see it, you, you do need an, an Offer Vault account to access the webinar section, but that's free. So just make sure you're registered for Offer Vault, and then you'll get access to the webinar section. Um, I'll also, if you follow me on Twitter, I'll tweet it out. I'll put it on Facebook, and I'll get it up on my blog as well. All right, cool. So uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. So um, any uh, any final comments, Jason? 
No, I'm just really, really happy everybody tuned in. Looks like we got 150 people, so that's really exciting. That 150 people still care what I have to say. So, <laughs> yeah. as you get older, you're constantly, am I still relevant? Do I still have something uh, worthwhile to share with the world? And that uh, that always makes me feel good. So I just want to really say thank you to everybody, uh, you know, for attending. And and Mark, thank you so much for for allowing me to do this. It was fun. Okay, thanks, Jason. Great to have you on. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye.